So hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Anna Chacon. Um, I'm a board certified dermatologist. I live in Miami, Florida. I practice in 50 states online. Um, and I practice in person in three states in Florida, California, and Alaska, mostly in um, the government sector or uh, through IHS, Indian Health Services, through different tribal clinics and hospitals. And today I'll be talking mostly about my experience with the Alaskan indigenous population and being their dermatologist. And this is an aerial view of um, Alaska's and flying over. Okay, so this is a little summary of my journey. Um, I live in Miami, Florida, and um, I take several trips a year um, to the Arctic, the Arctic region of Alaska. Um, there's me in my backyard, and um, here's a map kind of showing uh, the distance I travel, which is quite large. Um, I became interested in this. Uh, you know, I do have indigenous roots about a quarter, um, mostly through my mom's side. Um, she's was raised in Guatemala, and I really didn't know too much about my indigenous roots, but recently um, in this role have just um, wanted to rediscover it. And I really um, fell in love with indigenous culture and just how special it is. Um, my grandfather um, from my mom's side was also from a rural town in Guatemala and he spoke five languages. He has since passed. So I didn't really um, get to learn a lot from him. I was in school most of the time. And, uh, but he uh, is also of indigenous background. Um, here's a photo of my grandma in her indigenous attire. And this is in our backyard in Miami. So mostly of Mayan descent through my mom's side. And today's Maya generally live within Guatemala and there's a picture of my dog as well. So this is a photo. The background is actually uh, pyramids uh, that I went to visit in El Salvador. Uh, today's Maya live mostly in modern day Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and parts of Mexico. And Tikal National Park is a um, famous park that has the ruins of the ancient city of Tikal. Um, here is a diagram showing the Mayan world with different archaeological sites and capital cities. And this is modern day Tikal. Um, so here's a summary of basically my journey. And this is actually one of the bush planes I was most recently in a couple months ago. Um, basically, I fly for three days. I take five flights. Um, I usually fly from Miami to Dallas or Chicago. It takes about three and a half hours. From there to Seattle, it takes seven hours. From Seattle to Anchorage, three and a half hours. And from Anchorage to Barrow, two hours. And there's only one flight a day. And then you have to charter a plane to a village, which takes one to two hours. And there's different airlines that do that, such as Wright Airline or Raven Air. Um, it is often canceled due to weather and poor visibility conditions. Um, okay. And Alaska Airlines is the main airline that flies throughout Alaska. Uh, they only go to major cities like Anchorage or Barrow or Fairbanks. Um, I asked someone, actually, I, I never knew what that, that figure um, at the tail of the plane was, and it's actually um, an Inuit, so an Alaskan Inuit, they um, have that on all of their planes. And um, basically, I was interested um, in my journey to help others who are also of indigenous origin, and these are photos of some of my patients, uh, the day of clinic, um, one of our rural village clinics, um, just greeting me, and this is photo of um, one of them uh, right outside of the hospital and the hospital is right there in Barrow. Um, and this is a diagram of basically the indigenous peoples and languages in Alaska. So it's very, very interesting. Alaska is huge. It's our la largest state and you could um, fit most of it into, um, it's actually our largest state and our least populated. So they don't even have a million people in Alaska. Um, most of the people in Alaska are actually in Anchorage, and um, most of the, the towns or villages um, have just a couple hundred, couple thousand people at most. Um, so this is basically a diagram, and I work up here in the Inupak region or the Northern Slope. This is also known as the Arctic. Right up here is the Brooks Range, and that is basically the last mountain, um, last mountainous region that you see in Alaska. Beyond that, it's flat and treeless and uh, permafrost and tundra. 
Okay. Um, so this was a photo I took at um, a museum. And basically 18% of Alaska's general population is American Indian or Alaska Native. It's actually the highest rate of this racial group in any of the US states. There are 228 federally recognized tribes under the Alaska Regional Office. This spans from Ketchikan, it's in the Southeast Panhandle, to Barrow in the Arctic, where I work, to uh, Eagle in the Yukon border in Canada, and um, to the Aleutian Islands. And there's more than 180,000 tribal members, and this is from the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Anchorage is often known as the largest native village. It has the largest population of natives with over 100,000 residents at 12%. Um, so Point Barrow is the northernmost point of the United States in the Arctic Plain. And this is also a famous, um, I wanna say structure that a lot of people take photos with, I did as well. And it shows you how far away you are from different um, important geographic points. The Inupat is the uh, tribe, indigenous tribe that I usually work with. And this is actually a family photo of one of my patients. The Inupat um, here, um, this is also um, a, a relative of one of my patients um, with um, whale, uh, whale blubber and whale meat, uh, which is, uh, makes a big part, uh, comprises an important part of their diet. This is a family photo. Um, I once asked an elder, what does Inupat mean? And they said, the real people. And um, I thought that was really interesting and meaningful. Um, they've been in Barrow, Alaska and the Arctic Slope for 4,000 years. Um, they're known, uh, they're able to survive in a really harsh Arctic environment. And they have a deep understanding of natural resources and how to use them. They, they basically um, are a culture of cooperation, sharing and subsistence subsistence. I took this uh, photo in Girdwood hiking. It's in Southern Alaska. There are no trees where I work, but so this is more South than that. Um, subsistence describes a traditional way of life among many Alaska natives. It, it describes the practice of relying on the environment as a source of food and materials for daily living. And coming from Miami, I thought this was a big change, but something I really wanted to learn more about. I checked um, is basically the primary vehicle through which the government provides health services to American Indians and Alaska Natives. Um, there's chronic underfunding and barriers that limit access. So I actually work as an independent contractor um, for the federal government for uh, this region. Alaska Native Medical Center is the flagship that's in Anchorage. Um, they do have two dermatologists there and I'm the only dermatologist north of there for IHS. Um, so Indian Health Services, this is how it's divided. Um, it's almost divided into different corporations. So the um, Arctic Slope is Arctic Slope Native Association. There's Bristol Bay, um, different areas, Sea, Alaska, um, the Aleuts in the South. And um, there's different tribal organizations, um, different ethnic groups. Um, although there's 228 tribes, they're all subdivided into bigger areas. Um, there's hospitals that are tribally managed in Anchorage, ba Barrow, Bethel, Dillingham, Kotzebue, Nome, and Sitka. Um, and then there's 58 tribal health centers and 160 tribal community health aid clinics. I also visit these. Um, so there's no doctors in house um, 24 hours a day. It's just uh, health aid clinics and five residential substance abuse centers. Um, Alaska Native Medical Center is, as I mentioned, the referral center and the gatekeeper for specialty care. Um, and as far as I know, it's the only place where there are C-sections um, for natives, as well as surgeries. Um, it's very difficult to um, find specialists to go to these um, rural areas. So that's the only place they're performed. Um, okay. And these are the locations of the tribally operated hospitals, as well as their names. And I work at Samuel Simmons. There's Manilak in Kotzebue, North and Sound in Nome, Yukon in Bethel, and Kanak in Dillingham, um, the Anchorage Hospital in Mount Edgecombe in Sitka, right here in the South. And then these are different tribally operated health centers. So they're further subdivided and um, this is where they're located. Up North, they usually, um, they're much smaller than that. They have the community health aids. 
Samuel Simmons Memorial Hospital. This is a photo. Um, and it's a medical center and hospital. It's right here on the right, located in Agavik, Alaska. Agavik is um, the new term, indigenous term for Barrow. Um, it provides healthcare at local facilities and remote villages, and it's located 340 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Um, so a little bit about Arctic dermatology, and I didn't take photos of any patients just um, because we don't have a system for that yet um, that's been approved. So basically skin infections and abrasions are the fifth leading cause of inpatient discharges from Samuel Simmons. And that's based on IHS data. Um, cold exposure leads to different skin changes, acrocyanosis, chill blains, Raynaud's phenomenon, frostbite, cryoglobulinemia, libido reticularis, and cold urticaria. And this is a photo of um, uh, Turnigan Pass in, in Anchorage, very beautiful area. Um, skin conditions that flare in the winter, rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, and Raynaud's, um, chill blains. Um, usually due to cold injury, you can see here this activity would predispose to that on the fingers, toes, and ears, erythema, cyanosis, swelling, blisters, and ulceration. It heals in several weeks, and it's an occupational hazard for fishermen, hunters, and workers. Um, and severe injury could lead to bone damage and fractures, and um, sometimes you use vasodilators. Here's some examples. Cold urticaria is rare. Um, usually arises during rewarming and um, affects children and adults and appears with wheels at any site, um, can persist for two hours or longer, treated with antihistamines. Frostbite, due to severe cold injury below freezing, um, can lead to blanching and numbness, uh, treated by rapid rewarming, and can result in pain, numbness, cold sensation, hyperhidrosis, dystrophic nails, osteoporosis, and cold intolerance. Other skin changes due to cold are acrocyanosis, Raynaud's phenomenon, cryoglobulinemia, okay? Um, this is very common. I saw a patient with a very severe variant, um, but I wasn't, I, I didn't take a picture of it because he's um, related to the CEO of the hospital and, and we didn't have a good system yet. But um, winter itch is a very real thing. It affects a lot of individuals up here, um, all ages, common in older people not influenced by gender, hygiene, or socioeconomic status. And uh, factors include dry skin, autumn, winter, textures such as flannel and wool. It's not a visible rash, but usually um, skin is healthy, but slightly dry. And it's common on the legs. There's usually scratching. And you want to do gentle skincare, warm water, emollients, lightweight clothing, avoiding irritants, topical steroids, and antihistamines. Other medical conditions that are common in this area is actually congenital sucrase isomaltase deficiency. Um, it's rare, it's inherited, and it's due to the small isolated population structure, uh, why it's so common uh, within these traditional Inupat settlement patterns. It can lead to health problems, particularly if there's limited diet. And um, we usually use a prescription enzyme supplement that we order from Texas which is very difficult to import into this area. The digestive tract is usually involved. You can have bloating, diarrhea, gas, and abdominal pain. And here are some references. And me at home, this was Memorial Day yesterday. And this is my parrot, Gnocchi, that I found in our backyard. And this is me in my white coat. And a uh, photo of, of Anchorage in the background. This is me in a traditional outfit that was made by a patient that I'm wearing today, as well as um, this is um, Athabascan earrings with moose skin. And, uh, and uh, this is also a traditional um, outfit that I bought from a patient that has three different furs on it. Um, it's, it's beaver, um, wolverine, and wolf. And this is from a traditional shop in um, Anchorage that that's very well known, uh, this uh, attire. Thank you so much.